In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly get going with the sequencer that comes with version 2 of the syntax error from Alexander Pedals. This is going to be a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to set it up. Real quick, the easiest way to think about this is that the sequencer is just something that lets you have the syntax error turn its own knobs while you're playing it. Uh, it's a way for you to program it to control itself. And the way you do that is by setting up a sequence or a pattern of four different positions you want a certain knob to take. And then when you turn the sequencer on, that knob will just move between those four spots over and over and over again. So for this video, as an example, I'm going to set up a distortion sound using the syntax error, and then I'm going to have the sequencer change the sampling rate. All right, first things first, when you're working with version 2 of the syntax error, and it has the screen here, there's actually three different menus on the screen that you're going to be hopping back and forth between. And the way you switch between the menu screens is by pushing this knob on the left. So the first screen is main. This is where you dial in the basic sound you want as your starting point. I said I was going to use a distortion sound, so I'm in cube mode, and this is the distortion sound I've set up. This is what it sounds like. That's with no sequencing yet. That's just the sound by itself. Uh, and the other thing to know here is that these four knobs on the top of the pedal, these control the four things at the top of the screen. So here where it says Samp for sampling rate, this knob controls that. Here where it says Drive, this is that knob. Here where it says Filter, this is this. And Resonance is that. Okay, that's my starting point. That's the distortion sound I'm going to use. Then we go to the next screen, which is called Alt. This has some like secondary or utility features that you can use if you want, like volume and tone. Uh, and once again, the four knobs at the top of the pedal, now they control the four things at the top of this screen. So over here, this knob controls tone. I have that all the way up. This knob controls volume. I have that in the middle. And these two are doing some pitch shifting, but we're not going to touch that today. Okay, uh, moving on, we're going to go to the third menu screen. This is where the sequencer really happens. So the first thing you want to do is choose what you want the sequencer to control. And we already said I was going to set up a distortion sound where the sampling rate is always changing. So I want the sequencer to control the sampling rate. So I go to the uh, sequence. I put the cursor on the sequence option, or seek is short for sequence. And then uh, I put it that on sampling, sampling rate. All the options here are all the different options from those first two menu screens. Everything that was a parameter on one of those first two menu screens, volume, tone, drive, filter, whatever, anything that was on one of those screens is going to be one of the options here. We want sampling rate. We put it on sampling. Okay. Then what I got to do is choose the four different positions I want that sampling knob to move to. And the way I do that is with these four knobs at the top of the pedal again. Those are controlling these four bars at the top of the screen now, and each of those bars represents a different value or a different position for the sampling knob to take. So for the first position, which is this knob, I'm gonna say very low. Then on the second step of the sequence, for the position of the knob, I'm gonna say medium. Then for the third step of the sequence, the third position I want the knob to take will be a lot. And then for the last step, the last position I want the knob to take will go back to low. Okay, if I turn the sequencer on now, it's going to hop between those four values. And every time it moves, it's going to force the sampling rate to take that value. So it's going to continue moving. We're going to go back to that first screen. And look, you can see the sampling rate is changing now. Every time the sequencer steps, the value there changes. This is what that sounds like. So that's basically it. That's how the sequencer works. That's how you set up the sequencer to control something. For the rest of this video, I'm just going to go over some of the fancier things that are available over on the sequencer screen. Uh, so let's go back there. Here's what's going on with these other options. 
rate is just how fast you want the sequencer to move. So if we turn that up, you can see it'll move really fast. If we turn it down, it'll move really slow. Okay, then glide over here. This one controls how smoothly the sequencer moves from step to step. You can have it go continuously. It'll slide or glide from each value, or it'll jump very abruptly from each step. Uh, so you can choose that to be whatever you want by changing the glide value. Okay, then space is an interesting one. Uh, space will insert a little abrupt space every time the sequencer steps. You can add this kind of weird tremolo effect. There'll be this little break in your volume in between each sequencer step. It can really change the character of how this whole thing sounds. Messing with that can be fun. Uh, okay, then over here, trigger controls what happens when you turn the sequencer on or off. The thing that's on now, toggle, that's the most normal one. That's the one you're going to be using most of the time. Toggle just means if you push the button, it'll turn on or off. So you turn it on, and the sequencer will run until you turn it off. That's what toggle does. But the other options are step. This is one where every time you step on the button, the sequencer moves but it only moves if you step on the button. This one is useful when you're fine-tuning it and you want to hear exactly how each step sounds. This is a useful way to do that. Then the other options are one. With this setting, you just turn the sequencer on, and then it runs once, and that's it. And then momentary. This one is the sequencer runs if you hold the button down, but it only runs while you hold the button down. And when you take the button off, it stops running. Okay, and then the last one is pattern. This is uh, some prefabricated patterns that come with the pedal. If you just want to mess around and see what some options are, these are like the sequencer presets. These are just some different patterns that have been put there for you to mess with if you want to. Okay, that's basically it. Now that you know how the sequencer works, I have a whole other video about the syntax error showing some really crazy, creative, advanced things you can do with it. Uh, you might want to check that out for more inspiration. Otherwise, have fun and remember to be safe.